In this tutorial, we're going to actually start making some reliefs. We're going to talk about the most common settings that you're going to use over and over again and how to think about those settings. And we're going to talk about some ways that you can think about iterating the relief to go from the starting point to something that's truly awesome. So the first thing that we need to do is have a model open. And we had this cool model of this little dog. And we want to make sure that the first thing is that we're looking at it uh, at the right angle, an angle that we like, right? So we're going to reposition it to kind of get a good view. And something like this seems appropriate for whatever we're going to be making. So let's go with that. Uh, the next thing we want to do is kind of mess with the perspective. You don't have to do this, uh, but the default is, I think, 100. And going in one direction, you kind of get a more orthographic or non-perspective effect. And going in the other direction makes it very, very exaggerated. So as we talked about in the other tutorials, avoid the extremes, unless you have a really good reason to use those, as they can cause some distortions in the final relief. But going a little bit in one direction or the other actually makes a pretty big dramatic difference. Um, to the left will probably make things feel a little bit more dramatic. To the right will probably make things feel a little bit less dramatic, but that's up to you. Uh, we're going to go with something like 66, 67, something like that, 61. Uh, this is giving us the feel that we want. We're not even concerned with any of this other stuff yet, right? Um, so now that we've gotten that done, we're going to look at our output width and height. And you may, depending on your use case, need some huge resolution, some 8,000 by 8,000 resolution, if you have enough video RAM to do that. But that's not how you should be working, right? Um, it's not how you should be iterating. Keep your output width and height to some reasonable number, like 800 by 800 or 1,500 by 1,500, something like that. Um, because sometimes these things take time, depending on what settings you have. And you don't need to be spending that time while you're iterating, just on the final output. So we're gonna keep our width and height reasonable. And we're just gonna press go, generate relief. Everything else is default. Um, and we're gonna turn it to the side and kind of get a sense of is this what we want or not, right? Maybe if you're doing woodworking, um, you're thinking, you know, comparatively, how am I gonna get a drill bit that far down? You know, maybe, maybe the relief is too tall. Right? Or maybe it's too short and you're saying, hey, I'm on a 3D printer. I really want this thing to pop and it's not popping enough. So that'll be your first task. Just kind of look at it from the side and, and try to figure out if this is consistent with your application. If you're making coins, clearly this is way too pronounced. Uh, if you're going to put this on a ring, um, you're going to throw it into ZBrush for a jewelry model. Uh, this is probably too pronounced, right? So it just depends on what you're doing. The next step is going to be to kind of look at your height scale. And then based on the determination you've made about the initial state of this, you're gonna go higher or lower here. And you can go very low um, and you can go, um, I forget the maximum, but you can go above 100, right? I think you can go to 800%, uh, 900%. You know, you'll get a really extreme relief that way and it's probably not gonna look good. But you can if you need to. Um, so for our default of 67, uh, we're going to pretend like this is for, you know, maybe a, a jewelry application and we want this to be less pronounced. So we're going to maybe try lowering this to 40 and just see what happens. And between times, we're just leaving the view alone and we're pressing generate relief. And when we're happy with what we want uh, from a side profile, maybe maybe 30 is what we want for this, we'll turn it back. And now the second thing that we're going to do is something we haven't seen yet, but you can control the lighting with right mouse button and you can move it around. And the reason that we implemented this, what we're calling rake lighting, um, and if you go to an extreme, it'll pretend like it's coming from just that side, is this lets you figure out what this is going to look like with different lighting effects. So all reliefs, and especially shallow reliefs, are very dependent upon shadows to provide a sense of realism. If you look at a coin, right, you can really only see the thing uh, because of the way that the light interplays on it. So this lets you get a sense of, you know, am I getting from all the angles that are important to me this sense of depth? And um, 
it looks like for this model, everything looks pretty good. So we're just gonna leave the, we're still holding right mouse button down. We're gonna let it go right around here, just something that looks nice from all angles. Um, and then the next step that you might wanna do most of the time is determine whether or not you wanna bevel. And depending on your application, why don't we just first see what a bevel is. Right now, the model goes very cleanly directly into flat space, right? Let's add a bevel and see what that looks like. Start tiny all the time. We'll generate relief. And we can see that this has made the sides a little more pronounced. So depending on your application, this can be great. Um, certainly it's gonna look good in things like metal castings. Um, it may help to make subtle areas like the ears a little bit more pronounced. Um, because compared to the bulbousness of the muzzle here, the ears aren't really that far off the ground, right? And so if you're casting, if you're, if you're machining this in wood and you have no bevel height, um, maybe this won't come through as clearly because the resolution you're going to get in wood isn't that high comparative to metal or 3D printing or something like that. So bevels basically allow you to make the edges more pronounced. And do be aware um, that you need to go as low as you can get away with, right? Don't immediately go to, to large, um, especially if your model's height may not support it, because um, it can give you some pretty funky results uh, in certain circumstances. So go as small as you can here. Um, and that's about it, right? Uh, it's not that complicated. But just those few steps repeated uh, over and over and kind of looking at the relief and pressing generate over and over is what we want. And now that we're happy with the result, um, we're gonna go ahead and figure out what our output width and output height should be. Um, for most people doing most woodworking projects, and especially if you have Relief Maker Basic, um, 800 by 800 is probably good enough, right? It may not look the greatest to your eye because um, your eyes can pick up a lot more detail on a screen with computer generated lighting, etc. But practically speaking, when you get that result onto a piece of wood, you're not going to see a lot of this micro detail anyway. So practically speaking, for most woodworking projects, unless you're working with really high resolution bits on something that's massive, like a five foot by five foot, right? Um, lower resolutions are probably okay. Um, for CG applications, um, you're probably already going to have a much better idea uh, intuitively of the resolutions you need. They'll probably tend to be higher, right? Um, especially if you're used to using ZBrush or Blender, you're going to have an intuitive sense of what these numbers should be. But they're probably going to be between 24 by 2400 and 4800 by 4800, something like that. Um, so we'll just choose the final output, say 2000 by 2000 for our random use case that we've invented. And we're gonna generate it one last time. And now we're done. At this point, we're ready to export. Um, so go ahead and check out the export videos. And in a different video, we'll cover all of these more advanced settings. Not even that they're advanced, they just have specific use cases and most of the time you probably won't need them. Anyway, hope this video was awesome and we can't wait to see what you make.